Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Today, we're going to have the pleasure of meeting Chef Amos. She's going to do a fantastic uh, demonstration for you today on cake decorating. She's going to come on and tell you a little bit about that. So Chef Amos, thank you so much and take it away. Hi, everybody. So I'm Chef Amos. Uh, yeah, I like famous Amos cookies. Um, but I'm one of the instructors here at Escofia, and um, I'm in the pastry arts department. And uh, I'm going to show you guys one of the elements that we cover within the program. Um, one of the last classes is the art of cake decorating. And cake decorating, if you guys are on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, whatever, is huge. Every time I open up my feed, I'm getting all these videos of people uh, showing cake decorating skills. And we are in cake season. We are right on the cusp of it. We got graduations. We have weddings. You know, and there's always birthdays and showers throughout the year. And, you know, looking at a cake and, you know, seeing what grandma or whoever used to make back in the day made it look easy, but it's actually a science. We look at a lot of things, not just the baking of the cake, the flavor, but how do we build it so we can do all these magnificent things? I just saw somebody on Instagram had a cake that looked like um, Mario Brothers in honor of the movie. So that stuff is possible. And what we do in the class is give you the tools to do that. So there's, you know, different things that we cover, but the fundamental part starts with actually making the cake. And then we teach you how to make different types of icings and then the assembly process. So what I'm gonna do is give you just a little bit of a sneak pre uh, preview into the art of uh, finishing a cake off. So I'm gonna change my screen view so I can share some things that I've been working on in the background and let you see some of the things that you'll learn uh, in the pastry arts program. So here I've got my nice little moist chocolate cake. So in the professional kitchen, when we bake cakes, we bake one and we split it. Most of the time when uh, people make cakes, they make multiple layers and stack them. But, it, but the thing that makes a cake, you know, uh, more easy to decorate and things like that is look at how flat that is. Most of the time when you guys bake cakes, you get a dome on there. So what we'll teach you is how do you make a cake and not make it, you know, have a dome on there so it's nice and flat and makes it easier to work with. And this is a pretty tall cake. Okay, you can see it's pretty thick. Well, what I'm gonna do is do what we call splitting the layers, um, which is what we teach our students almost in the very beginning is how to split layers so that they can stack cakes. And that means they, they have to have less cake pans and things like that. And it's actually pretty easy once you get used to it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna split this actually into three layers. I'm just gonna do one for right now because I'm gonna use, um, I'm gonna use the other two layers for another cake. But um, I'm gonna take my serrated knife. We show them how to use knives. Uh, that's one of the first skills that you always learn when you're in the kitchen is what we call knife skills, handling things properly. So a nice clean cut there. And I'm gonna cut another layer here of my cake. And uh, the reason I'm using this knife is a serrated knife is extra sharp. We also call it a bread knife. And it cuts through the crumb of a cake super, super fast and super easy. And I'm going to take these layers here and I'm gonna separate them and I'm gonna use uh, one of the layers on a cake that I've already started building because the magic of television, we were, we're always a couple of steps ahead. All right, I'm gonna put that behind me. I'm gonna take some of my crumbs off of here so I don't get them in my cake. And then I'm gonna pull out the cake that I've already started working on and show you the next step in the building process. All right, so here is my cake. I'm gonna put one more layer on there. So, you might wonder, well, how do you keep your cake so moist, especially if I make a cake from scratch? We have a lot of tools and tricks that we show the students in the program, but one of my secret ones is something that we call simple syrup. This is um, sugar and water that gets boiled. Um, it's also a good way to uh, sweeten iced tea without having sugar crystals in there. If you're in the South, sugar, sweet tea comes already pre-sweetened. If you're up North, they're going to give you some sugar packets. So this is how you avoid that. But we're going to take my brush. We're going to brush the top of the cake. So now you guys see, you know, your wedding cakes, those cakes that come from, you know, bakeries. This is the secret, a little bit of simple syrup on the top. Um, doesn't make the cake wet. It just makes it uh, retain some moisture. And I'm just going to brush the top and then we're going to start putting some icing. So we teach you about different icings in the class, um, some classic ones like your American buttercream when you see cake decorations. That's American buttercream and you'll see me use that. We also teach them some other buttercreams, European style, Swiss, Italian, French, uh, Japanese, Russian. We go through all of that so that you have some variety when it comes to building your cakes. So the next thing that I wanna do with my cake building 
And so I'm going to put some icing on there. So I've already got some icing between the layers. And what we teach our students is how do you build a cake that not only looks good when you cut into it, but it's stable. So when we want to build, um, put other layers, like, you know, you have a wedding cake or whatever, we have the ability to stack layers on top of it. So what I've got here is some buttercream, okay? Nice and rich, a little bit sweet. And I'm going to dump it right in the center of my cake. And I'm going to use that as my layer. We also teach them how do you get the layers the same between um, all the cake layers. So we go over all of that in class through demonstrations and then also through some video instruction. So it's gonna take my nice smooth buttercream and it's been, it's been flavored. So that's the reason why it's not pure white. A lot of times we just work with pure white icing and I'm just gonna spread this and notice this is a technique we teach them about not dragging their spatula back and forth so that they pull up a bunch of crumbs. So we teach, uh, very, very classic professional techniques that a lot of bakeries use and get them prepared for once they get out into the industry. All right, so I'm just pushing this, filling my cake up with the icing. We teach them about um, flavor profiles as well, how to match up, how to determine what flavors go best with, you know, different types of fillings and things like that. Um, how much icing should go between our cake layers because we want to make sure that we don't uh, put put too much fat on a cake when they're eating it. So I'm just gonna bend down, I'm gonna see if it's nice and flat and it is. And so now what I'm gonna do is, you remember the cake I cut earlier? I'm gonna take one of these layers and I'm going to add it on the top of this cake. So I've got a four layer cake that I'm building here. All right, so my next layer goes here and it's pretty flat. I can look from the top, pretty flat, could be a little flatter, but that's okay. And we're going to finish our cake off, okay? So what I actually did, one thing um, before we started talking was, if you look at the outside, it's got a coating of icing. We call that a crumb coat. And the reason we crumb coat is, you see all the crumbs that are pulling up? So we teach them about why they crumb coat, what the purpose of it is, and how to do it. And that just protects the cake and prevents our cake from looking a little bit messy. So this is one of the little techniques that we teach them about and show them how to do in class. So that's my crumb coat there. So now what I'm actually going to do is go ahead and I'm going to ice my cake. Okay, so nice and clean. So I've got four layers of cake. You'll see it once we get to the end. And I'm going to take some icing and I'm going to dump it right on the top, nice and smooth. And then I'm going to do the sides of my cake as well. And we'll do a little bit of decorating. And then we'll look on the inside. Okay, so remember we're in cake season right now. So I'm just gonna take my icing. I might get a few crumbs in here. I'm not gonna worry about that for right now. And I'm just gonna ice the top of my cake. I'm gonna let some of that icing push off to the sides a little bit, nice and flat. And there are different techniques that we show our students as well. So I still got some icing here. So now I wanna get some icing on the sides of my cake as well. We also teach working with um, fondant. That's a, a big thing now is working with fondant. It's a nice uh, flat surface that allows us to do some different decorating styles. So we wanna get a little icing on the sides. We're just gonna press it on here. And we're gonna start to finish this cake off. Nice and clean. All right. So we teach also, we also talk about, you know, how do you cut a cake for serving sizes? We talk about pricing, we talk about design development, cover a lot of things within these classes. All right, so here I go, getting my side of my cake iced. I've got another container of icing I'm probably gonna have to grab really quickly. Let's get all that we got out of here. All right, let's get a little bit of this just pressed on here. We'll fix it in a second. All right, try to get as much as I possibly can. It's very humid, I'm sweating. I'm like, oh my goodness, with this icing, all this butter in here. Okay, I think we're gonna be pretty good here. Got just almost just enough and I do have a backup, so I'll be in good shape here. All right, here we go. All right, so all I'm doing is pressing this icing right along the sides of the cake, nice and clean. 
All right, so you can see I've got a couple of spots that I need to fill in just a little bit. So I just want to go all the way around, make sure my cake is covered. I might pull a few crumbs up. All right, so you see I got my icing all the way around the sides. So now it's like, okay, this looks okay, but we want to make it look a little bit better. So what we teach them is how do you make your sides straight? So again, if you watch those YouTube videos, you'll see people take a little comb or a little flat tool. They go around, they straighten their sides up, try to get that icing nice and, and clean. Got a little left over, I can use that. And I go back in and patch a couple of spots up with what pulled up. Make my sides a little bit straighter. All right, so let's do that again. And then I'm gonna do a little combing to make it look a little bit fancier since we are at Mother's Day. Try to make a nice looking little Mother's Day cake. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking off some of the excess icing and I'm pushing some up to the top so that I have a nice shelf so I can build a nice uh, flat edge. All right, so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take our icing and I'm gonna do what's called dragging. And again, this is the same thing we show our students and that they learn to do. And I'm just gonna make my top nice and flat. Okay, so nice flat top. Got a few crumbs in there, not gonna worry about that for right now. And then I'm gonna finish my sides off. I wanna do something a little bit fancier. So we'll take our cake comb and we'll comb the sides of the cake just to give it a little bit of fanciness to it. All right, so there's my comb sides. We'll come back and we will just clean the top off just a little bit. And voila. Okay, so there's my, my flat cake. All right, so cake needs a little bit of decoration, don't you think? I think so. All right, I'm going to grab my other icing because I need to make a border. Didn't realize it run out of icing. So we're gonna make a border around our cake and then we're gonna do a little bit of uh, decorating. So decorating is a big part in the pastry industry, whether you're doing cakes or you're doing cookies or you're making uh, plated desserts. The art of decorating is something that we like to focus in on because people like uh, the visual aspect of baking and pastry. They like the visual look of it. So we're gonna put a border on the cake. I'm gonna show you how we write. We teach the same element and then put a few flowers and things like that on there. All right, so this is, I got some more buttercream here. So one of the things that we work on with the students is writing skills. Um, they practice a lot, piping borders, writing with chocolate, Learn, just learning how to get control of a lot of the tools and equipment that we use in the pastry shop. And believe it or not, you know, we buy a lot of our stuff from places like Home Depot, but very simple tools, things that are very easy to use. So I'm gonna pipe what's called a shell border. So I've got a piping bag, we got a tip. The tips come in the kits and we're gonna pipe us a nice uh, light shell border. So let me just stir my buttercream up just a little bit. Get it nice and smooth and we're gonna fill our bag. And we're gonna pipe our border. All right, so here's my bag filled with my icing. I'm wearing gloves because we also talk, teach about safety and sanitation, um, which is a big part of the food industry. So I'm working with a finished product. I wanna make sure it's sanitary. And we're gonna do what's called a shell border, most common border in baking and pastry. So this is a turntable. So we talk a lot about that in class, but all I'm gonna do is just do a nice little border on my cake. And the turntable just allows me to be a little bit lazy so I don't have to move a lot. Okay, so here we go. Just getting our border all the way around. And like I said, practice makes perfect. So the more you practice, and I am I like to give a lot of tips to my students about, you know, shortcuts they can take just for uh, practicing their skills. You know, like I'll tell them, oh, we'll just, you know, use some Crisco or whatever, just so you can get used to the motion or 
you know, learning how to ice a cake by bot making a box cake and practicing with that. So that's your industry ready. So look at that. You see how fast that went? Got my border up there. All right. So the next thing I want to put some decorations on here. So one of the things we teach is how to do things like make roses. We make them out of things like fondant or gum paste, or this is American buttercream. So American buttercream is uh, the one that most people are used to. And uh, it's if you go to the grocery store and you see a lot of decorated cakes and things like that, you'll see American buttercream roses. So I'm just going to type a quick rose. We'll put it on the cake. So let me move this out of the way. Let me get my hands in here. So what I'm going to do is pipe a center for my flower like that. So I just pipe a nice little mound of icing. And then I'm going to pipe my rose center. And then we're going to come back and we're going to start piping some petals. My icing's a little warm because it's very- Chef, we had a question for you. Mm-hmm. Um, Someone wanted to know what's the best place to buy a bunch of piping bags. Um, I buy mine on Amazon, to be honest with you. Um, I, I live in Atlanta and in Atlanta, there's a, a decorating store. I just don't like to get out in Atlanta traffic. Anybody who's lived here understands uh, 285 is basically a parking lot. So I just ordered off of Amazon um, I, and the prices are, are comparable. But if you live in a larger city and you find a restaurant supply store or a pastry supply store, they'll also have them. Um, when I buy my bags, I buy either a 12 or an 18 inch. 18 inch is what I use when I need a lot of icing in the bag. And a 12 inch is what I have for this um, buttercream here because I, I'm not gonna put a lot of icing in the bag and I wanna be able to control it. So very good question. All right, so we're gonna take our rose, we're gonna put it on the cake and I'll do one more. Actually, I'll do it directly onto the, the cake here. So I'm just gonna show you what I'm doing. I'm piping just a mound of icing. It's a little, like I said, it's a little um, soft because it's very humid here today. I'm gonna pipe a center. Okay, so that's the beginning of my flower. And then we're gonna pipe our leaves. Our, or excuse me, our petals. And I'm gonna try and do a really big one so that I can have some different sizes on here. Chef, we do have another question. Are you okay with asking questions as you're doing I that? I sure am, I do it all the time, yep. We've got someone that wants to know, is it safe to put raw egg whites in buttercream icing? We don't do um, raw egg white icings. We do what's called cooked sugar icings. So we use raw egg whites, but we either heat the raw egg whites up with sugar or we pour a sugar solution in there. If you're going to make other kinds, we normally recommend that you use uh, pasteurized dried egg whites or pasteurized liquid egg whites. But no, they need to be heated in order to make sure that they're safe for consumption. Good question. All right, so let's do Let's do one more directly on the cake or a couple directly on the cake. We'll do a couple of um, flowers directly on here. Okay, so, and then we'll do some leaves. So I've got some flowers here. And like I said, it's a little bit warm, but I've got some leaves. So this is another one of the tips that usually shows up in the bag. And we'll just pipe some leaves on here, give it a little bit of color. And this is very similar to one of the assignments, the very first um, assignment that uh, they do in the cakes class. So we got our flowers here, but nothing says, you know, a finished cake like some writing. So what should I write on here? Should I write Happy Mother's Day or should I write um, Welcome to Escoffier? I'll let somebody tell me what I should do. Suggestions. Welcome to Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I was going to say, it looks like welcome to Escoffier. Okay, well, what... we'll do that. And we got a couple. Happy Mother's Day and welcome to Escoffier. Well, I'll explain. I'm going to do one and then explain how I could actually take it off the cake and do the other. So I'm going to, I'm going to do, I'm going to see if maybe my printing is good enough that I can do both. But I will tell you that if I have to change my writing and if I want to take these flowers off, this cake is completely, I guess you could say flexible. 
because I can refrigerate it and then take everything off and put it back on there again. But this is one of the things that we teach in the class is how to make these paper bags and in baking, uh, specifically pastry, we use this all the time. So it's what we call a cornet bag. All right, so I'm gonna pipe, let's see, welcome to a Escoffier. So I'm gonna take my, my bag and I'm going to write. So with writing, what I tell people, I happen to be a fan of pens. If I see a good one laying around, I'll take it, I'll admit it. Um, I love writing, so I, I'm, I'm pretty good at it, but it's something that takes practice. So we you know, teach them about you know, how to write because if your penmanship isn't great, it's just something that you have to practice. But we'll go ahead and we'll write welcome Chef, we've got another question. Are you okay with that while you're writing? Yes, yes, I so, am. Someone would like to know um, if we, the course includes any dairy-free or vegan icing options with the decorating. Um, it, the recipe book does not have options, but um, certain instructors are very fluid, like myself. I, I'm very well-versed in plant-based and also diabetic cooking, so I can provide options. But we also, I believe, cover some of that in the plant-based program. So there, there are resources to teach you about gluten-free and dairy-free uh, baking. Like I said, myself, I'm very well-versed in it. So I usually, if somebody asks me, I will give them um, options and explain to them how they, how they can make some adjustments because baking is a science. And we look at ingredients from a chemical aspect. So we have to be very careful when we start swapping ingredients um, how the end result might turn out. So, you know, it is an option, but it's not necessarily built into all of our recipes. And I didn't do a great job with that, but welcome to Escoffier. Okay, so if I didn't like this, you know what I can do? I can take this, I can put it in the refrigerator and for refrigerate it, and I can pop all these decorations, including the border off if I chose to do that. So that's essentially one of the assignments that we cover in class is we teach you how to write with chocolate. We teach you how to write with American buttercream, make different borders and uh, do two tiered cakes for celebrations and things like that. So the last thing that I'm gonna show you is we also, when you're in the class, we always wanna see what the inside looks like because it's easy to make the outside look great, but what does the inside of your item look like? So let me do a couple of things. I'm gonna transfer this to a better visual turntable. If I can get this off of here, there we go. All right, here we go. And then I'm gonna show you what the inside looks like. Let's see, where can I put this? There we go, got some spots right there. All right, here we go. So let's present this, make this look a little bit visually better. All right, so then we like to look at the inside. So ultimately what we're looking for on the inside, and let me grab a plate here. Should have grabbed one earlier. Is let's see what the inside is because the inside is just as important as the outside. So we'll cut here. And we always wanna see what it looks like because we're gonna look at the crumb, the, the crust and give you some tips just to help you stay on track. All right. So let's, and I need some applause and oohs and ahs if it looks good on the inside. All right, come on, here we go. Oh, look at that, yum. So there we go. There's my cake on the inside. All right, and then you got the outside right there. So that is cake. 101. Anybody have any more questions? So I, I'm going to tell you, I've seen a lot of great cakes come out of my classes. So you guys can do this very easy, good recipes. Like I said, a lot of practice. We give you a lot of feedback, a lot of interaction. You can do a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with us, but this is just one of the things that you learn in the baking and pastry program. Chef, I do have a question. They like to know if the class is via Zoom. Yes. So we do a live session. Uh, during the live session, what we do is give you an overview of what the assignment is. 
Um, and we talk a lot about, you know, what to expect and we give you some visual presentations and then we follow it up with a demonstration. So in the demonstration, depending on what the subject matter is, the chef will demonstrate certain aspects of the assignment. Like uh, today I did a demonstration for my class for their final cake and I showed them how to make the gum paste flowers. And next week we're going to show them how to actually build a two tier cake covered with fondant. So yes, there's always a lecture and then a visual demonstration of whatever that, that subject matter actually is. And Chef Amos, you're getting a whole lot of applause and waves and oh, claps. Oh, thank you, thank um, you. There, the next question for you, Chef Amos, is do you know how to make roses before learning how to bake or did you learn in school? Okay, so um, I actually uh, took a baking class and I took a savory class, but I took a, a cake decorating class before I learned how to bake because I just wanted to see if I was going to like it. So I took a cake decorating class before I actually learned how to formally bake. Uh, when I got to culinary school, yes, we did cover all of that. We covered um, gum paste, regular flowers. We learned how to make all different types of cakes and icings. So it's a little bit of both for me. Um, I still take continuing education classes. Uh, whenever I can with different people around the country. And then sometimes I teach them myself as well. Okay. Uh, someone said that they're currently in Foundations of Bread. When will they take Cake 101? Uh, that's the very last class uh, before you go out into your externship. So the very last baking class is cakes. And in that class, you do a cake like this. We teach you three different types of cakes, uh, two different types of icings, and we also teach what's called mirror glaze. So if you see these cakes out here now that look really shiny and wet and look like the galaxy, we also teach that one as well as a classic cake called a Charlotte. So we cover a big variety of cakes and we give you at least three or four opportunities to uh, practice your decorating skills. Okay, the next question we have Chef Amos is the cake classes in the pastry art program. I'm about to finish up the global pastry block. So I'm just curious. Okay, what's the question again? And I'm a little, it says, I'm gonna read it the way it's coming in. Is the cake classes in the pastry arts program? Question mark. I'm about to finish up the global pastry block. So just curious. Yes, it is. It's again, it's the last class before your, technically before your externship. So this is the very last class in the pastry block. Okay. Do we get to retry? the assignments as many times as we want before an assignment is viewed for grading? Um, that's really up to you and your resources. Um, I encourage practicing. And as a matter of fact, I also encourage people that if they are working on an assignment and they have questions, you can always submit your assignment for preview through email. So you could say, chef, I'm not sure if my buttercream turned out right. Uh, can, can you tell me? We don't have to be surprised and wait until your assignment is due to actually give you feedback. I encourage people to ask for feedback as they're going through from mise en place to looking at um, decorating and things. I would rather help you as you're going through the assignment versus you just trying to do it on your own and waiting until it's submitted for me to grade it. Um, my grading is very comprehensive. I talk about the science as well as what you did and, and give you tips. So I'm a very, very thorough, um, communicator when it comes to giving feedback on your assignments, but you do not have to do this along, alone. I highly encourage students that when they're in the program, reach out to your instructors as often as possible. We want to help you. We don't want you to feel like you have to do everything by yourself. I will tell you that the um, study halls that we do the live demos serve as a bridge between what you, the assignment is and the reading material. So we kind of tie everything together and I think that the study halls are the key to success with any of your classes. So I, I thoroughly encourage people to either attend or watch the recordings of them. And Chef, we just got a couple more questions for you. Mm -hmm. Someone wants to know, how do you prevent layers from sliding? How do you prevent layers from sliding? Well, there's a couple of things there. Um, you know, a lot of times layers are going to shift for a couple of reasons. Either they're not cut flat so when I do my demos and I do cakes, I explain to people how to learn how to make your layers flat. Because if you're sawing with the knife, they're gonna be uneven. Um, or if you don't hold the knife correctly, they're gonna be uneven. So they always have to be leveled. And then your buttercream is the other aspect because it's a lot of fat. So what you have to learn when you're making buttercream is how do I make it correctly so that the fat doesn't separate? 
because if the fat sits on top, the cake is going to be like sitting on ball bearings and it's going to want to slide everywhere. So when I explain in my classes, I explain how to make the items correct so that when you start to build your cakes, you're not worried about shifting. So that's part of the science behind it. Now, when it comes to doing stacked cakes, it all is based on if you get that first cake built very well and the second cake, you're actually gonna be able to dis displace the weight so that you can build cakes that are very tall. So I get into a lot of the science when I talk about cakes. Okay, someone wants to know what's the best frosting you use for making flowers? Uh, American buttercream. Uh, American buttercream, and I'll explain the, the ones that we cover. American buttercream is usually shortening and powdered sugar, maybe some water. Some will have uh, butter in there and it, it's going to hold up better. Mine is, like I said, it's really humid out here right now. So, and you can kind of see I'm shining uh, because it's very hot, but ideally American buttercream is the best for decorating. Um, the, the most stable out of all the buttercreams we teach is called Swiss, and that's where we heat sugar and egg whites up together and then whip it um, until it's nice and frothy and then add in butter. Then you have Italian meringue buttercream, which is what I use here today. It's the hardest because you have to pour a sugar solution that is at a certain temperature into whipping egg whites. Um, and then we also teach French, which is egg yolk based instead of egg white based. And then there's some other ones that are out there as well. Okay, so we're going to take one more question, and then we're going to move on. I'm going to do an overview of how the program works for everyone. Um, Chef, the last question for you is, what helps the cakes not stick if you do not have the parchment paper? Um, the, there's really not much of anything, to be honest with you. Uh, you need parchment paper. Um, I will tell you this. I don't use butter and flour when I bake my cakes at all. The only cakes I butter and flour are going to be pound cakes. And the reason I don't butter and flour my pans is that when you are baking and you're talking the science of it, when the cake is in the pan and it's starting to rise, it's got a, some kind of leavener, baking powder, baking soda, or both in it. As the cake rises and the gas develops in your uh, chemical leavener, it's got to find some place to go. And if you spray the pan or you put butter and flour, it can only crawl up so much because it's sliding against the pan. And then it says, well, I've still got to develop. So it develops a dome. And then when your cake comes out, you've got to cut that dome off because you need a flat surface to build a stable cake. You don't want a cake that has a mound on it. So we, I talk about that extensively. I, I would not try to use aluminum foil because it's a heat conductor and it's going to end up giving you a hard crust on the bottom. So really your only option is parchment. And if you can't use parchment, you can try a little bit of butter and flour on the bottom but the sides you have to be very careful with. So, and I know there's some people who would say, I, I always butter and flour my pans. I've never buttered and floured them and they always come out of, the, out of the pan unless I am making a pound cake. That's the only exception to the rule for me. And, it, and it's worked and I've been doing this 20 years and I'm gonna stick by it. <laughs> Chef Amos, thank you so much uh, for your cake demonstrating, your decorating on the cake. It was absolutely beautiful. We so appreciate you. Thank you so much. All right. And if anybody has questions, they can always reach out to me, but I appreciate it. Very good. Thank you. You're very welcome. Bye-bye.